Neurons, or nerve cells, are the primary computational elements of our brains and central nervous systems, and they underpin information processing throughout the animal kingdom, even down to very primitive organisms. For example, the nematode worm C. elegans has a very stereotyped central nervous system containing exactly 302 neurons, forming about 7,000 connections known as synapses. And this is enough to allow it to perform food-seeking, uh, threat avoidance, uh, learning and mating. The fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, has about 100,000 neurons, forming an unknown number but in excess of 20 million synapses. And it is clearly capable of a wide range of very complex behaviours, including flight. 100,000 neurons might sound like quite a few, but human brains have around 100 billion neurons forming hundreds of trillions of synapses. Neurons are extremely complicated pieces of biochemical machinery. They are highly varied, highly asymmetric, morphologically very complicated, noisy, analog electrochemical computers. Each single neuron is a highly complex dynamical system involving a very large number of tiny flows of water and charged particles across membranes that uh, have very minutely controllable permeability to different ion species. These ion flows across the membrane are modulated in very fine-grained ways by a whole array of different chemical messages received mostly from other neurons and mostly, although by no means exclusively, picked up by receivers in a big array of complicated receiving tendrils known as dendrites. All of these messages overlap and occur on a range of different timescales. The points of communication between neurons, known as synapses, come in a range of different kinds, but the vast majority of them, known as chemical synapses, occur in a non-contact way. The completely separate neurons come very close together and chemicals are released into the gaps in between them completely isolating the electrical processes in one neuron from those in another. A key feature of neurons is that they are electrically excitable. If the aggregate effect of all of the flows in and out of the cell by all of these different ion species driven by different chemical messengers leads to the interior-exterior ion balance exceeding some threshold, then a rapid electrical pulse, known as the action potential, is generated. This voltage pulse flashes down uh, the output channel of the neuron, which is known as the axon, really quickly. And at the end of the axon, it may, under various circumstances, lead to neurotransmitter release at its own synapses, and that in turn will modulate the behaviour of the neurons that it is connected to. Neurons are not the only excitable cells. Another big group of excitable cells are muscle cells. But where the excitability in muscle cells leads to the production of force and movement in neurons, its effect is to handle the processing of information. A lot of the complexity, a lot of the underlying sophistication and processing power of neurons was essentially invisible until pretty recently. The development of new techniques for microscopy and electrophysiology, new means of genetic manipulation to introduce fluorescent markers, has allowed us to see things that we were not able to see before. The more we find out about neurons, the more sophisticated they seem to be. But at least some aspects of their complexity, in particular their high level of connectedness, became apparent from the late 19th century when researchers such as Camilo Golgi and Santiago Ramón y Cajal 
developed ways of staining them and studying them through microscopes and wound up producing very detailed drawings of what they saw. These made clear that the cells were very asymmetric and that they were highly connected. So even though the internal complexity of the neuronal functions was not apparent, it was clear that there was something very complicated going on. Cognitive scientists and subsequently AI researchers have often tended to underestimate the sophistication of individual neurons as processing units, generally viewing them just as very simple integrators, whereas nowadays we would probably think that they were closer to full CPUs in their own right. But they did correctly identify that connectivity was an important component of their processing power. One common family of models of the way that neurons function is as integrate and fire units that essentially accumulate inputs from their upstream neurons and at some point that leads to a threshold being exceeded and a voltage pulse being generated. The overall signal is reflected in the rate of generation of these pulses, the firing rate or spike rate. If the inputs are coming thick and fast, then the threshold will be reached quickly each time, and so the spikes will be generated very frequently. If the inputs are very low, then it will take a long time to reach the threshold each time, and so the firing rate will be low. The rate then is interpreted as encoding a continuous output value from the essentially discrete pulses of the neuron. If we treat the firing rate as a continuous input at the synapses and as a continuous output from the neuron, then a fairly crude model of what is already a crude model in the form of integrate and fire has the neuron taking a weighted sum of the inputs and then applying a threshold to it. The weights in this case represent the synaptic strengths at all of the inputs, that is how strongly responsive the neuron is to inputs from particular sources. It should be obvious that this model is essentially the same linear model that we know and love from the perceptron and elsewhere. This linear model is extremely far away from the actual dirty realities and the complexities of neuronal behaviour. The analogy between the complex integrative behaviour of a, an actual biological neuron and this weighted sum plus a non-linearity that we see in perceptrons and the like is an extremely loose one. However, a lot of the brain's processing and learning does appear to stem from the synapses, which lends credence to the connectionist idea that connections between neurons are where the processing power arises. Basically, artificial neural networks like the perceptron and others that we will discuss bear only a very distant metaphorical relationship to true biological neuronal networks. However, it is a metaphor that has borne a great deal of fruit.